Good morning. Will Babylon survive God's judgments? Our reading today comes from Jeremiah chapter 50, verses 39 and 40. Therefore the wild desert beasts shall dwell there with the jackals, and the ostriches shall dwell in it. It shall be inhabited no more forever, nor shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. As God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah and their neighbors, says the Lord, so no one shall reside there, nor son of man dwell in it. Now the prophet here is still talking about Babylon, and he paints this picture. It's a picture of an abandoned city. There's no humans left living in it. All that's left is ostriches and jackals. You know, the wild animals have come to inhabit it because the people are long gone. That's the picture, this picture that's put there. So now the overthrow of this city is absolutely complete. And in fact, it's compared, therefore, to Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah. Those are two Hebrew words, and you know of the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, but you might or might not know that in Hebrew, those words each have a meaning. One of them means burnt, and the other means destroyed, which is exactly, of course, when you go back to Genesis uh, 18 and 19, you see what happens there. Those cities are burned and destroyed, completely destroyed by God. So it's that picture that the, the Holy Spirit leads Jeremiah to draw from as he now portrays what will come of Babylon. So this is a picture of total judgment. Everything is over for these captives, these people gone off into captivity in Babylon. And it just seems like Babylon's the indisputed superpower of the world. This is the opposite. What they're seeing is looking the opposite from this picture that they're, they're being told. You know, this is the way it really is going to be. It looks like their nation's been overrun. They're kind of in a hopeless state. And yet God is showing them this picture. This isn't forever. This is a moment. But I'm going to bring you back if you'll just return to me. So that's the picture that Jeremiah gives them. The picture that is given them by God's prophet is completely contrafactual. It's exactly opposite from what they would expect. And yet, this is to be a picture of hope for them. God's way is not the way that you look out your window and see. God's way is the way it finally lands at the end. And that's a lesson for you and I as we live day by day. Remember that what you see in front of your eyeballs is a moment in time. It's a snapshot, but God's kingdom is forever. We're glad that he's on the throne and things are going to be changing, changing very dramatically for the believer. So we should remember that where God is going may be totally different from what you see right out your window. Look at the picture God gives you and be a person of faith. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, the lesson comes back to us again throughout the Bible, actually several times, but we need it several times. The just shall live by faith. Lord, we need to live by faith and not by sight. Show us, Lord, how to trust you, even when things all around us seem like they look disastrous and hopeless, and, well, this could never be. And yet, Lord, we believe you. You are on your throne. You are dramatically in the point of changing all these things, and it will bring glory to you and hope and joy to us. Thank you, Lord. We ask you to help us think this way, help us to live this way. In Jesus' name we ask, amen. So Babylon is going to be ended, and we're going to live in the world the way God always designed it to be. Keep that in mind, even as you live this day, serving the Lord Jesus.